Let's use what we have learned to go on a wild ride. So imagine we are driving somewhat irresponsibly through the streets of San Francisco. And we come over a hill. And then for some reason, there's a loop. We have to go through a loop. The question we want to ask is, what is the minimum and maximum speed that we would need to make it through this course? And by a minimum and maximum, I mean when you go over a hill, let's apply our intuition for a minute. When you go over a hill, if you go real slow, you stay on the hill. Everything's fine. Right? But if you go fast enough, you'll actually jump. You'll come off the hill. So we want to know here, what is the maximum speed we can go when we're in this position and not fly off the hill. And then on a loop, if you think about a loop, if you go too slow, you might get to here and just fall. You have to go really fast to make it around the loop. So here, we want to know what is the minimum speed we have to go to make it through that loop, if this is our mass of our car, like that. All right? So what we can do is we can actually solve these by thinking um, about circular motion. And you might look at this and say, well, that's not really circular motion. That's the first thing, is to realize it is at a certain point, right? So the, the defining property of circular motion is that the force is perpendicular to the trajectory. As you go around the circle, the force is always pointing to the center. So it's always perpendicular, no work is done. Well, that actually happens right at the top of a hill. At the top of a hill, all we have is mg that way, and we have a normal force pointing up. And those right at the top are perpendicular to the motion. So you actually do have circular motion, something like this. And the same thing is true of the loop. Right at the loop, mg is down. Uh, the normal force actually would point down in this case. And those are both perpendicular to the loop circle. Now the entire trajectory of the loop or of the hill might not be a perfect circle. But right at that one point, it is a piece of a perfect circle. So what we got to do is see if we can figure out this maximum and minimum speed by thinking about the forces, masses, and accelerations. OK, well, let's start with the uh, hill. What is the maximum speed we can go and make it over that hill and stay on the road? All right, so here's our car. And we're going to do a free body diagram, because you always want to do a free body diagram. And let's see. So we're going to think about the two forces on our car, treating it as a point mass. Mg is down, the force due to gravity is down, and of course the normal force pushes perpendicular to the surface, so the normal force is up. All right. And we know we have Newton's second law uh, that even applies to circular motion, especially to uniform circular motion. The sum of the forces is the mass times the acceleration. So we are going to think of this in one dimension and just write the components. So these are vectors. Obviously, I don't usually put it, but there is a vector over the g. We're just going to think about the one-dimensional components and make them positive or negative based on direction. And we're going to make posi uh, down positive. Okay. So that's a long way of saying let's add up these forces in one dimension. mg is positive because it's down minus the normal force. It's negative because it's up. mg minus n has to be equal to m times the acceleration. And in this case, the acceleration is the centripetal acceleration during this one moment as you go, uh, what's down in the moment you're going on this part of a circular path. So it's still a centripetal acceleration right at this point, even though the car doesn't stay on the circle. You could still call that AC. So we would uh, put, plug in what we know AC is. mg minus n is m speed squared over r. So look at this equation. And what this basically tells us is that if you want to go a certain speed, you have a certain centripetal acceleration down, right? And you need a certain amount of force to make that happen. In this case, the force is given to you by gravity. Gravity is pulling in the, direct, in the correct direction to give you this centripetal acceleration. The normal force is actually in the wrong direction. And that's why the faster you go, the bigger your centripetal acceleration, the less of a normal force the road pushes up with. When you're not moving at all, when you're just sitting there, we say this part's zero. And that's why the normal force equals the, the force due to gravity. But then the faster you go, the less normal force there is. Okay? So we said, what's the maximum V? 
right? So as you go faster and faster, you need a bigger and bigger um, a centripetal force. But what's the biggest it can get? The biggest it can get is to have no normal force and have it just be equal to mg. Right? So the weight is the biggest force you're going to get down. Right? There's nothing else that's going to pull down. The normal force isn't going to change directions because it pushes up from a surface. So really, mg is your maximum centripetal force. So when you're talking about finding a maximum or a minimum, you would say mg equals mv squared over r, like that. Therefore, to get v max in this case, you cancel the masses, right? And you solve for v, and you see it's g times r, and then you take the square root, and it's a square root of g. And then the specific r you mean in this case is big R h. I'll call that the radius of the hill. And it's the radius of the hill if you drew sort of this circle um, that represents this, this part of the hill. Okay? It's really the height of the hill would be the radius. Well, now that's how we get the maximum speed. You can be going and stay on here. Let's do a similar thought process here for the minimum speed it takes to stay on the loop. So in that case, free body diagram. Um, you're going to have mg down. And in this case, the normal force is also going to be down. The normal force always pushes away from the surface. The surface is the track or the road. It can only push down. So you have mg down, and you have normal force down. So if we write our uh, Newton's second law, mg plus the normal force is m. In this case, we're also approximating circular motion. So I'll just go ahead and write mv squared over r. Okay. And now let's see, we want the minimum speed we can go. Uh, well, let's see. So if you go really fast, what's going to happen? If you go really fast, you need a really large uh, centripetal force. Well, mg is just mg. That doesn't change. But the track can adjust the normal force to be whatever you need. Okay. So if you go really fast, you'll get the mg pulling it down plus a big normal force pu pulling it down. If you think about it, when you go fast through a loop, yeah, the loop has to apply a lot of pressure to your tires. But then if you want to go slower and slower, trying to find the minimum v, a little bit slower, you need less normal force. And a little bit slower, this gets smaller, you need less normal force. And the minimum would be when there's no normal force. That's when you're just barely staying on the track. And if you go below that, you won't stay on the track. If you go below that speed, then you, uh, the force due to gravity will be bigger than what you need, and you'll fall. So actually, again, the minimum is when the normal force is zero. Right? So that would be the case where we solve this again. And look, we get the exact same thing. Right? We cancel the masses. We bring the r over here. And we get v is the square root of gr. In this case, the v minimum is the square root of g times, I'll replace it with big R of the loop, the radius of the circle that is equivalent to the curvature uh, of the loop. So I went through these carefully because these sort of come up all the time. And you can get confused thinking about all the forces, although the answer is really always just the square root of gr. You just got to get the right, the right r. But this is really the reason. It's thinking about maximum and minimum velocity you need to keep this equality true.